had a house right on um That's sick you had windows <laughs> yeah it was unbelievable <laughs> yeah we had running water and a toilet and the whole bit uh, we, we um, had a bucket and yeah we don't want this. <laughs> <laughs> so you talked about struggling with your sexuality it was actually something i was going to ask you a bit earlier yeah. on the episode but i didn't the time didn't really seem right but now is the time obviously you must have known in high school you're playing a oh, fuck i knew before then yeah well there you go even before <laughs> then but you, you 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 get into that age where you're playing junior hockey did any of your pals know any of your teammates know oh i'm sure some assumed or maybe but like no sleeping with women okay so yeah i've i've been to this day and i'm like i admit this publicly because i think it's important to talk about um as part of the story and also so people know that anyone can be anything um i was a douchebag bro womanizer like i, I was uh, i've probably been i've been with way more women than men even now um and i'm gay so like you know we don't know who's was that was that like what. a uh um like sort of macho bro facade yeah 100 percent. i was like the stereotypical hockey bro like I walked into a room, I was cocky. I thought I was so sweet. Like it was a gift to the world. And like, um, you, are. you know, well, it was obviously working if you were still getting kills, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Okay. I did. Okay. And, um, but yeah, you know, I, I, up until like, even when I was living in Holland, I was still dating women. Uh, like I was, I was, was that a more like around team functions? Were you still like maybe dating guys like on I hadn't, social time? I wouldn't even, I didn't think that I could be gay and play hockey. So I, um, because, and it wasn't because anyone like made fun of me or chirped me about potentially being gay, but it's just the language we use. Like, you, you know, locker room language is like, oh, that's so fucking gay or what a fag or something like that. I actually called so, out what's his face on the golf course today for saying that. I did yeah. So yeah, he like but he, you know, I'm not gonna name his name obviously. Yeah, because they're both really good dudes. So. And also I can't remember his name, so it's irrelevant. <laughs> um, but like he missed the part, he went, Oh fucking gay. I was like, What's wrong with that? And he went, Oh. <laughs> but it's it's true though, and it takes people saying that for people to realize and and um but I, I heard it so much and so often in those locker room settings that I didn't think I could be gay and play hockey. So I did women. And it was when I was in Holland, I actually, um, I checked, uh, there was, it was before apps, I'm old. Um, so I went on a dating website and it was called Gaydar and you could check other cities. So yeah. I checked my hometown and I saw a bunch of men on there who are married to women who are older, who are looking for men on the internet. And I finally, it like clicked. I went, holy fuck, that's going to be me. Yeah. And and that's when I decided to like, okay, I got to figure this out. Yeah, I mean, I, I can relate pretty much to everything you just said. Uh, you, you don't feel like you can be anything other than straight playing hockey. Uh, and like you said, you, you openly admit you were a douchebag womanizer. Um, it was like, for me, especially when I was up in Glasgow, I would actively pursue any any woman just so people wouldn't have any kind of inkling that I was that I was attracted to men. Obviously, I'm bisexual, Brock's gay, and it's kind of the same thing. You you want to hide it as much as you can because you can't hundred percent other than straight and play hockey. Um, it's funny you say that because as soon as my buddies would say, "Wow." she's hot or there'd be like a girl in high school and the guys would be like oh my god she's so good looking i would date her that'd be the challenge then for you oh, i would date her Brock i was Brock. like <laughs> yeah, like i was like you know I, I, that's who i gotta date yeah so same same thing as what because well, the word gets around real quick if you go and date the hot chick that's popular by high school for example then everybody knows that you're the guy that's dating the hot chick no one thinks the guy that but then, then also dating all, the hot chick's gay they also, don't. also all the girls are then like wait i think i'm hot than her i want a piece of him and it's like this kind of cycle you yeah. fall into um anyway we're going too far yeah, down no, the rabbit hole because yeah. my wife sometimes listens to this podcast does she really uh, uh, i just listened to a few episodes um I don't but think like um 
sorry, like, yeah, forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn here, but I know, like, from us speaking, like, it was such a, like, if we're like that's, that's a, whoa, where's Baddy going with this? But it was, like, such a, a freeing moment for you to, to come out and, and say it. And, like, obviously, like, the media and press took it possibly, like, out of your comfort zone. But, like, what was it, like, Brock, what was, how, how did you feel, like, when you first came out? Was it, was it, like, just taking off this big, heavy suit of armor? No, uh, well, I, I, I don't know how, if Zach came out in, like, I came out in stages. So I had, um, I was friends with Brian Burke's son, Brendan. Okay, yeah. Um, I saw his interview when he came out and I was closeted. I'd taken a step back from uh, pro hockey and I went and played university hockey in Montreal. And, and I saw Brendan say on TV that he was gay and I reached out to him and we became friends and we talked every day. And I finally, like, like after, it was weird because right after I came back from Holland, I went on a date with a guy and I ended up dating him for three years without anyone knowing. Like wow. nobody in my life, nobody knew. And I had, I was kind of lucky. I had a, a couple knee surgeries. So I was, I took the next two years off. And I was, it was like kind of lucky because then I didn't have to like hide it in the locker room. Did you feel like, were you living with that kind of constant state of worry that someone would find out? Oh, all the time, friends, family. And I wouldn't date, like I, my family, everyone was in Sudbury. I wouldn't date there. I'd only date in Toronto because yeah. it was big and nobody would know. And like we dated for three years. We had he had an alias for me, a fake name with all of his friends so that they wouldn't find me on social media. And, so and did any of his friends or family, were they aware at all? Cause they would, did they know that their, their son was gay and that he was dating? Oh, oh yeah. He was openly gay. Yeah. Like, he was out in, in his, to his family, to his friends, like his friends were gay and I would go out with them and we had a fake name. So that they couldn't find me on on social media and out me, and you know what I mean. So like I completely hid it from everyone. He didn't meet a soul in my life. So I dated somebody for three years without anyone in my life knowing. And Thanks for watching 4,000 and Counting Clips. If you want to hear the rest of the episode, you can head over to Apple or Spotify now. Do that right now. While you're there, don't forget to leave a five-star review if you enjoyed the content. While we got you on our YouTube, make sure you subscribe and there's going to be plenty more videos coming soon.